Well, let's get started then. So uh, if you guys have any, uh, any property you'd like us to review, uh, send them over in the chat. Uh, we'll start with one that we, uh, we picked on, uh, on MLS. Um, and then uh, we'll pick a random one from the chat. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do also, it. Yeah, just keep them rolling in and uh, we'll pick one up later. So, well, we just got an MLS number. Awesome. There we go. It shows a. Do you want to pull it up, Anthony? Yeah, we'll pop this one. Okay. Let's type it in. Okay. Do you want to share your screen when we're ready? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, we can see that. Ten twenty-three Penway. Thanks, Vinay. So, uh, yeah, so we've got the property here that is in which neighborhood is that? Pembroke Meadows, I think. Pembroke, yeah. yeah. Pembroke Meadows. So let's have a look at that one. So it says we've got a three bedroom, two full bath, 833 square feet. So a bit of a, a smaller property for three bedroom. I'm curious to see the, the pictures in that. Mm -hmm. uh, partial finished basement with separate entrance, easily developed basement. So let's have a look and see, see how well the basement would be to develop. So yeah, let's take all the pictures. I'm curious. Yeah. So, uh, the outside here so let's see when is that property built 71 yeah so the exterior looks pretty much original yeah we've got the uh, living room like i said it's hardwood flooring yeah it looks like it's straight out of the 70s so yeah not a lot of upgrades it looks like especially the kitchen here oh but yeah that definitely needs needs yeah it needs a lot of work yeah so yeah okay yeah, bathroom. That's the basement, right? So the basement looks pretty rough. Uh, let's look at that kitchen setup again. Like, like yeah. This. Yeah. So it looks like there's a walkout. Yeah. Um, but the kitchen does need a lot of work. Yeah. Double garage. Okay. So right off the bat, that separate entrance is not not going to pass, right? Mm -hmm. Like, is, is there even stairs? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it, but they don't look very really safe. So definitely yeah. need to be redone. Uh, it looks yeah. like there's some parging issue on the concrete as well there. Exactly. And we have a detached garage. The garage actually looks decent. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely needs some some work with that that exterior separate entrance, right? So yeah, um, and one more thing. Let's go back to that separate entrance. Okay, so right above that separate entrance, we see a, we see a bedroom, or I think it's a bedroom or whatever is up. Yeah, up there. yeah. So that needs to be protected. Yeah, so that needs to be protected. So like whoever buys buys his property will have to construct a some sort of a roof structure right over the, mm -hmm. the stairway where you can walk out. Uh, so. Just something to keep in mind uh, for for budgeting. Yeah. yeah. So let's run the number on this uh, baby here. So we've got a purchase price of three twenty five. Yeah. Calculator here. So let's assume we get it at listing price. So three twenty five purchase price. So let's figure out our rents on this. So. Um, and if you uh, shrink the uh, realtor.ca thing and, and make the calculator bigger because the fonts, it's, it's a oh, bit too Oh, yeah, big. thank you. Yeah. Or zoom in, maybe. Yeah. Okay. That I can get on the stream. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got 325 purchase price. Uh, we've got what looks like, uh, is that the heated garage? Um, doesn't most likely not is my guess. Doesn't seem to mention, but it looks like uh, 
decent double garage. Yeah. Yes. Two car garage. Okay. garage. Um, so that right off the bat, if we rent that separately, um, usually in my experience, it's a, in that neighborhood, it's a little lower, but a good 300 bucks a month. Yeah. Uh, especially that it's going to the back alleys, he can allow uh, people to store cars, things like that. Um, so let's have a look at rent for main floor. So what we like to do, even when we have a good idea on the rent, is we can go on rent faster, yeah. and pull up similar uh, units, and um, get a good idea of comes that way. So, so if we go We're looking at Pembroke Meadows here, so we can yeah. down. And usually you can look at some areas around it too if you don't have enough properties right right there, right? Um, so we'll start main floor. We've got a three bedroom. It's a smaller one though, so I have to keep that in mind. Yeah. So um, I'm not being in Pembroke, so, so you gotta, we got to yeah. do a little, like, like what you said earlier. Really. A little bit out. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes there's also uh, something we can do is do full house or two bedrooms and then adjust our rent because of that. So if we look at two bedrooms, there still isn't many. We've got three in Abbeydale, which is not too far. 1800 bucks, and is that with or without utilities? That 1800 yeah, so let's have a look. So the 600 bucks is most likely shared. We'll yeah. look at that. So 1395, we've got um, yeah. 1100 square feet, so a little bigger than the subject property. And uh, we've got no utilities included. 1395 pictures so that seems to be somewhat comparable it's also original condition but it's in much better shape right upgraded, yeah upgraded appliances better shape yeah. um, laundry and suite so we've got that for 1400 two bedroom yeah and we have three bedroom for 1800 which does not include utilities but the city to look in yeah 60 percent did you garage 200 there? Uh, I guess that's a uh, discount rate probably if the tenant rents the garage as well. That's pretty common. So let's look at this one. So that one's pretty nice. It's original but hardwood floor. Pretty good shape. Looks like the kitchen's being upgraded at some point too. Yeah, definitely looks much nicer than the other one, right? Yeah. So, it's also a larger unit, right? Yeah. So what I like to do as well then is look at full houses. Um, and hopefully we can find one that's directly in Pembroke. And then we can adjust from that, right? Pembroke. Yeah. The full house that's rented here it won't tell us how much, but given the deposit. Probably 1650, eh? Yeah, likely. Yeah. Maybe it's not more than that, but it could be. Uh, sorry, we, we like we know they can't charge more than one month's deposit. Yeah, uh, but they could charge less, so the rent could be higher than that. Um, then we've got one here, 1850 for full house in Pembroke, and it's 1,200 square feet, so it's a bigger house. So we know our ceiling right now is is 1,800, right? It it can be higher than that just based on the on the two uh, comps that we've looked at. So then what we can do is look at three bedroom in nearby forest lawn. So we've got this here, 950. So that's a little closer to our subject property, 1550 a month. So the pictures. It's an interesting floor color. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's the pictures, but it looks almost like red <laughs> ish. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that. So original kitchen, kind of an odd layout too. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Here. Looking at those, it looks like for main floor, we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of fourteen to fifteen hundred a month. Um, I would say on the lower end of that, that would be that'd be my that'd, maybe let's go with fourteen. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's 14. Yeah. I think that's a realistic amount. Yeah. So we'll put the $1,400 for main floor. 
Yeah, and we want to look at our basement as well. Uh, basement unit, which in this case is that's a two uh, bedroom. Yeah, two bedroom, not legal. So we'll have to adjust for that. So again, we've got nothing in Pembroke, uh, nothing around it. So we kind of have to go and look at the uh, forest lawn. Forest lawn, yeah. I think this is something too. Over time, when you get really used to neighborhood, like Santosh and I uh, invest a lot in Bowness, Huntington Hills. The neighborhoods that we invest in, we know the rent even more. So often, we don't even need to pull comps, right? We'll just kind of know from uh, from our current rentals how much they'll go for. Uh, so we've got a few basements here in Forest Lawn, um, but this one for thirteen hundred, which actually seems high for the area. So I'm curious to see. Uh, how nice it is. It's renovated, yeah. Actually looks original. Yeah. It's got new flooring. Uh, yeah, new flooring. The kitchen is renovated probably 10, 15 years ago at least. Um, or just a refacing. Yeah, I, I think this rental might be overpriced. Yeah, that's something to be very aware of, actually. Very good point, Santos, because what we see on, on Rent Faster doesn't mean is what it will rent for. So you have to be careful with that, especially right now that rentals are going up. Uh, we see a lot of landlords that will try to overshoot their, their prices by quite a bit and then work their way down if they don't get tenants. So you have to kind of filter out the, uh, the, the ones that are out of line, right? So. We've got this at 1375 two bedroom, 1100 square feet. So it's larger than a subject property and it looks like it's had substantial renos. This looks pretty nice actually. Yeah, that's, that's renovated for sure. That's very cool. nice, very nice basement. Uh, then we've got Two at 701 bedroom. So these would be shared. I'm pretty sure it's 450 square feet. Yeah. So that's that's also too small to be a comp. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some. That, one. that looks like a similar size in what we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. This is also pretty 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 good shape. Right? It's nothing yeah. wrong with it. So. Kind of odd layout, but really good shape. Got a separate laundry, right? So that's one yeah, thing. Separate laundry. Definitely. Yeah. Clean entrance. And we're at 1100, right? So we, we already know that we're looking at likely something under that. So, you know, just looking at that and it comes in the area, uh, what would you say, Santosh? I would say, well, 850 to 9 because it's, it's in pretty rough shape. So probably 9, I think. Yeah. So we can go in the middle at 875. Yeah. So that gives us total rent of about 2450 a month. Um, that would be excluding utilities. So usually, in most cases, we'll do like a 60 40 split where main floor pays 60% utilities, basement pays 40. You can also include utilities. Uh, we both like usually to get the, fan, the tenants to pay them. Um, so then we'll look at our property taxes for that property. So the figure out property tax, you just go to the listing. Um, put that number in again. Nope, went away from me. Okay. Uh, so A, one, two, four, two, three, four. Yeah. There we go. So we'll have 22. That gives us 189 a month. Uh, insurance in most cases is around, you know, 1200, 1400 a year. Yeah. And, and how you figure out insurance costs, it just kind of comes with experience. Um, like since we we both own multiple properties, you kind of have a ballpark idea of what it would cost for something like this. Um, if you're not sure, um, I think the best way to go about it is to talk talk to other investors who currently have properties in that specific neighborhood. Um, and, and they probably, you, you could probably get a better estimate by speaking with them. And that's something important to check on your own as well. So call a few insurance companies, get some quotes. 
because the price that I pay or CentOS pay may not be the price that you'll pay on the exact same property. Exactly. Uh, since it's property dependent, but it's also dependent on the applicant. So yeah, that can yeah this is this this kind of rough estimation only applies when you're just kind of quickly running numbers when you're looking at MLS. But once you get something under contract, you're you're doing your due diligence. That's when you call your insurance company, get your quotes, and then figure out if it, you know the property is going to make sense for you. Exactly. So as we go along, um, repair and maintenance. Now that will depend on the age of the property, uh, the type of property, obviously, if you've got the huge house uh, with more units, yeah. you'll, you'll have more uh, maintenance costs. From our experience over you know past 10 years running rental properties, usually for a single family of that age, we're around two, 250 a month yeah. uh, to stay maintenance. Now, I would say probably closer to 250 on this one, given the yeah. age and the shape, the current shape, right? Yeah, I agree. Uh, we'll go 250. Uh, property management, usually in Calgary, it's around 10, 12%. Uh, we will run the number considering that you'd be self managing. A lot of new landlords to get started will manage it yourself. We still manage our own properties as well. Um, so we'll go with zero on that. So that gives us, let's just expand this. So with a 20% down payment over 30 years, uh, that property would give us a cash flow of about 600 bucks a month. So it is a cash flowing property. Now, keep in mind that if you want to legalize the suite, you would need to put in a fair amount of capital into that house. As we talked, there's uh, yeah. stairs that need to be modified and, and covered. There's lots of upgrades to- Stairs got to be modified, kitchens got to be done, both up and down, flooring, paint. So it's, it's a fairly, it's fairly involved. There's quite a bit of work to be done in that property. So, uh, yeah, something something for whoever is planning to buy to keep in mind. Exactly. But that gives you a pretty good idea. And we're looking at 0%, like just looking at no appreciation at all, just the cash flow on its own. We're looking at a return on investment on year one of about 17%, which really isn't bad. Uh, that obviously is assuming that the market stays flat. Uh, just based on your capital pay down, uh, principal pay down, and cash flow. Um, so yeah, better than uh, most yeah. investments in the stock market would give you. So exactly. So so one thing, one thing now that now people may be wondering. Okay, well if I have to spend like sixty grand, is it still worth it um, to to legalize this this place? May or may not. We'll have to take a deeper look at that because. Mm -hmm. You look at our four return streams. Cash flow makes up ten percent of that, and if we if we sink more money into the property, that return is obviously going to be it's going to be diluted, so it's going to go down, right? Um, so assuming now we we just break even on cash flow, we we still have a six point three percent return, but that's now coming from the principal pay down component. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's so true. that's that. So then now you got to think about can I make a solid 6.3% return elsewhere. If you can make, if you can consistently annually make 6.335% elsewhere, then maybe this is not the right investment for you, right? And, and that's something that each of you have to decide for yourself. What's a, what's a good investment? Like, and what, what's my return level that I'm comfortable with, right? And to um, clarify, this is if you were to spend enough money that your cash flow would essentially end up being break even, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. So, and that number, like that break even or that desired return level is different for everybody, right? So, maybe for me, I need 10% return for it to be worth it, but maybe someone else is willing to do it at 7%, right? So, uh, exactly. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, too, is usually um, some of the lower class neighborhood, like what I mean by that is, you know, class A, B, C, B. Uh, some of the like C and D neighborhood will usually provide a little better cash flow, yeah. uh, which is good, but it also comes with a certain amount of added risk and added management, right? So you have to be careful the type of property you get. Like if you get an awesome luxury property that's brand new with no issue, usually you'll be also looking at the lower cash flow, but on the upside, you're also looking at less management, less maintenance, less headache. Uh, yeah. so it's, there's always a, an upside and a downside to different strategies. So. Exactly. 
So does anyone have any questions on uh, on that property, the, on either the way we run the number or any investment questions? Yeah, just, uh, just put it on, on Facebook or, or on here. Or... Just put it in the chat. And yeah. um, does anyone have another property they'd like us to look at? I think we only have Vinay that uploaded one here. Yeah, about eight people listening. So, uh, well, we can run another one. We we had one we wanted to do as well. So I'll just pull it up here. And uh, as we go along, feel free to post questions or uh, any comment you have, and we'll get to. How that. about rehab and refinance? Yeah, if you can answer that, I'll just pull out that yeah. other property here. Yeah, so so as uh, I'm assuming you're talking about a burr. So if you were to burr this, then we would have to look at comparables. So to, to make this into a, a successful or, or profitable burr, you want to make sure you're not overspending. So the next step, if you, want, if you wanted to go down the burr route, would be to look at um, – now, we already know what our, our top kind of top-of-the-line market rents are. So we want to aim for that. So we're, we're basically going to match the level of finishes in those properties, right? So those properties with basements renting for thirteen ninety five, what do they have? They they all have you know subway tile backsplash, just basic kind of shaker cabinets. We're just going to do that. Um, basically, match the level of finishes, and then and then you got to think about how much do I have to spend to get it to that level, and if it makes sense, right? Um, and then after that, depending on how much money you're into, you have to kind of work backwards, so you'll have your 80% loan to value when you do your appraisal. Um, and then deduct how much you owe and see if it's worth it. See how much money you're going to be left into the deal, right? Uh, so it's a little bit more involved. Um, so maybe that's something we can cover uh, maybe next week for a different discussion date. Did I kind of answer your question? Uh, I'm not sure who posted that. <coughs> the name, yeah. I'll let you answer in the chat. Vinay, if you have any questions about what Santosh just explained. Oh, awesome. Great. Good. Okay. Well, let's move along. We've got another property here that uh, we wanted to do an analysis on. So that property is in Brotherwood um, in the Southwest. Yeah. It's a nice, nice suburb from, you know, 2000-ish for most builds out there. Uh, so in this case, we are looking at a four bedroom uh, three and a half bathroom walkout. Um, we've got fireplace, a gas fireplace. Um, we've got central AC, um, renovated kitchen, lots of counter place, uh, counter space. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and we have an illegal suite in the basement, which is great. Uh, now we'll look at how much work would be required to legalize those in Calgary. We've got a great program right now where um, it's a lot easier to legalize an existing suite than build a brand new one from scratch. Uh, it's mostly just meeting fire code for the most part. That's something we have experience doing ourselves too. So if you guys have questions on that, we'd love to answer those. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Adriel, yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll do it on a future one. We'll just kind of do it the simple, easy, old school way. Uh, but yeah, for today, we'll, we'll run with this for today. Good feedback, though. Yeah, we'll we'll keep yeah. that in mind for next uh, for the next one, for sure. So yeah, let's look at this property. So outside looks pretty nice, Got nice landscaping and every and everything. So carpet, living room. Got the yeah, it's, it's nice there's there's really nothing I, you can find faults with. <laughs> No, it looks in very good shape, like well maintained too. Like the walls don't look like they're all scratched up or anything. It's you know, it's a nice property. Nice kitchen. Yeah, it's renovated, new new appliances or new yeah. work. So. It looks like the cabinets probably just got the refacing. Uh the house from 1997. Okay. These look like probably original cabinets to me. Great. The appliances have definitely been replaced, including the hood vents since uh since 97. All, all those look 
you know, a few years old top. So, so half bathroom, master bedroom with an in suite bath as well. So is it, this is, you know, it's nice. Nice, nice. very, very rentable upstairs laundry. So. Too much gray, yeah. I mean, this is a very debatable topic though. Um, a lot of people get bored with too much gray, too much white. However, for rental properties, it's actually a good thing because it's better to have a color, in my opinion, that's a little boring, but no one hates than have an awesome color you think is great, but some people will either hate it or love it. So even though it's boring, usually white or gray is, is actually a pretty good pick for rental. It's, uh, yeah, easy to catch up these colors and they're usually pretty readily available. <laughs> so. Yeah, easy to touch up is a very good point too, because you will get dents and scratches from the net, so. Of course, yeah. So illegal suite, um, actually nice, not not a huge kitchen, but. Yeah, I, I noticed right away there's no hood vent, right? So that, that stove doesn't have a range over that, it. That would actually be a, a likely a fairly easy upgrade. Yeah, um, or actually, it looks like it has a bathroom fan or something right above it. Yeah, exactly. So that that would definitely be something to add. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think the furniture is included. That that would have likely be either when the owners live there or the previous the previous tenants or current tenants. Yeah. So basement is a little smaller, but it's it's a nice space for sure. Um, and you know, to legalize this, I don't think it would require necessarily a whole lot of work just from looking at it. It's got drywall ceiling, uh, so it would likely just need the small columns throughout, uh, mechanical room, drywalling, and th those kind of uh, standard stuff. Yeah, just pretty uh, more of the cosmetic kind of fixes. Mm -hmm. for it. So, yeah, and, and wow, that mm -hmm. garage is huge. Yeah, it's a very nice double garage. It's heated as well that I saw from the description. Nice deck, walkout. So the walkout's mm -hmm. nice, right? And mm -hmm. you, there's no there's no common entrance where tenants have to share the entry entryway or anything. So it's definitely a bonus. So has a lot of light too for I mean for the tenant that lives in the basement, they're pretty much on, on the main floor in terms of lighting. So yeah. It's a great feature to have. So let's run the numbers on this. This this is a pretty nice house. So we're at forty nine nine hundred on the purchase price. And let's go have a look at the rents for this one. Yeah. Go again to rent faster. Yeah. Now you can use other websites too, by the way, guys. Like go on Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, check out a few places. Uh, I like rent faster just because the filter options are really good and the map. I, I think that those just, just, the same, just right? more, more organized, I think. Yeah. <laughs> But if you, th this is again for like quick math, just to see if your property is a maybe. If you want to, like, if you're sh interested in going forward and you're doing more due diligence, that's when you really have to look at even more sources, right? To really confirm your assumption and make sure your numbers are, are accurate. So go pick up Rada Wood. You can include Evergreen across to the pretty similar neighborhoods. So we'll start with main floor. Now we've got the four bedroom. I don't think we'll find a lot of four bedrooms. They're not that common, but if we have similar- Was it four bedrooms for the entire house or was it three up? Uh, let's go we'll check that. That's a good question. Because I think it was three, it's three plus one. Yeah, it probably is three plus one. It, it says it up there. Yeah, three plus three. one. Okay. Yeah. So three bedroom, yeah. probably yeah. two and a half bathroom upstairs and probably- so that's the main floors we have. So we don't have anything in Evergreen and Briarwood, which is a bummer because they're the comparable neighborhoods. Uh, Mill Rise and Shaughnessy are older. Um, so we can still have a look at this one. It's it's a lot smaller. Like the, the subject property we have, uh, I believe is 1,700 square feet. Scroll down a little. 1,500, yeah. 14, 47, yeah, 1450. Yeah. 1450, so this is a bit smaller, and they're asking 1800 a month with no utilities included. Yeah. So it's there. It looks like that's, yeah. on, that's definitely needs renovations. Uh, yeah. Purpley carpet. Looks original from the 80s, which is when Mill Rise was building. So 
nice pink countertops. Yeah. Yeah. Pink countertops. Yeah. Wash and dryer and kitchen too. All right. So yeah, I don't think we need to look at much more of that. Um, and that's for 1800. So what I would do again then is look at the full houses, right? That's a usually pretty good one. There's way more of them. So now we can drill down at Strata Wood and Evergreen. So let's go by price. So we can filter by price. The so cheapest one here. So we've got one at 1600 square feet right in Broderwood. So that's a pretty good comp. Yeah. Full house. So right away, it doesn't look as nice as a subject property, actually. Yeah, exactly. I think it's the carpets. <laughs> yeah, mainly the carpets. The kitchen is pretty nice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just the tub. That's a nice feature. But even all the trims are a bit older style. Uh, and our subject property that looks like it's got more modern colors and finishes. Uh, they have the garage now. They don't. I'm not sure if they have it. So they they have the garage included, so that's something to keep in mind. And obviously they have the whole basement, right? Uh, so we have that for 2200, and it looks like we're just going up from there. Like that's our low end. So just looking at this, I think we'd be around 1850 to 1900 at least for the main floor. Uh, you know, at Millwise property was asking 1800. So should we go with 18 just to be conservative? Well, the millwise property was 18 and smaller. So I think even yeah. at 1850, we're quite conservative. Okay. Yeah, let's, do, let's go with that then, 1850. Yeah. And then check our basement. Sorry, what were you saying? No, I said, yeah, let's check out the basement. Yep. So yeah. the two bedroom. Well, so, so one bedroom, yeah, basement. Bedroom basement, yeah. One bedroom, one bathroom. Let's filter by price. So we've got one for 950. Sorry, I was just trying to get Evergreen and Bridal Wood, which are more comparable. Yeah. So we've got this one at 950, yeah, right? And Evergreen, one bath. No utilities included. Yeah. Walkout basement. So that's also like our subject property. Yeah, it looks like it's had some renovations. The exterior looks nice. Big laundry. Yeah. So I don't think they have the size listed, but this looks quite comparable. Yeah, it's it's a one bedroom, so mm -hmm. yeah, they don't have the size, but it's probably around six to eight hundred. Walk out as well. 950. So this one in Brotherwood is also 950, also one bedroom. Is this a walkout? This is wow. Yeah. This is really nicely. Planned. Yeah, walkout, definitely nicer than our subject. Although some of the appliances are older. Uh, so we don't have a whole lot of pictures. Yeah, so they are asking 950 for that. So we've got another one at 950 here in Evergreen. This actually does not look as nice to me. Yeah. Let's look at the thousand ones. Let's see how those are. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Let's have a look. Thousands. So one bedroom as well, six hundred square feet. This is bridal wood as well. Yeah. Yes, sweet. Okay. Also, they have side entrance from the front. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, they have a lot of photos. I'll skip through yeah. faster on this one. So is that this is the that right concrete floor. Or? <laughs> yeah, concrete for sure. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, that's when you don't want to put flooring, I guess. You just polish your concrete. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's pretty durable. It's not going to break. Or... True. No issue with flooding either. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so 1000 bucks for that. Okay. So, you know, I think we can go conservatively with 950 again, right? Like, yeah, yeah, just to be conservative. Pretty good comps around there. So 950 garage now, it's, it's a nice double garage. Um, looks like in a quiet area and it's heated as well. So I, I think that would actually bring closer to 350. 
Yeah. I think we can do 350 for that. Because there's, there's storage over top too, right? Above the garage. So. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So we're at roughly 3000 a month. So we'll adjust our property tax. So again, you can see that in the listing. You can pull it up and run faster at CA pretty easily. So we have that here. Realtor.ca, I guess. <laughs> or, yeah, Realtor.ca. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, run faster won't give you the tax info. So don't, don't try that one. So three grand a month. Two fifty-four. Insurance. What was that? Front garage. So uh, maybe fourteen hundred a year. Yep. And we'll bump it up a little bit. Divided by twelve. Yeah. Again, run the number depending on your own situation, but that's in our experience pretty accurate. Yeah. Uh, reserve now in this case actually would lower the reserve because the property is in good shape and newer property as well. Mm, I don't know. For me, I would I would keep the reserve the same because it's a bigger property, right? Yeah, a little bit bigger. Yeah. But it's also ninety seven. We can leave it at two fifty. You know, better be conservative. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's better to better to leave it higher. Yep. So. So we end up at four hundred bucks a month cash flow. Um, pretty good i mean that property doesn't need as much work or maintenance as the one in pembroke so again you're wearing you're weighing a little bit um the drop in cash flow but you also get uh less maintenance and exchange likely and yeah exactly and again like we're not factoring in any any uh, market appreciation in these numbers so uh it's kind of the real deal of what you're gonna get yeah because if we even go with a very conservative two percent which is much lower than what we've seen over the last few years, right? Then the ROI in year one jumps to like 20%, right? Just from a 2% bump in appreciation. So uh, when you leverage, the appreciation matters a lot more. You know, like if you've got the 20% down payment, your leverage makes it that every 2% you have an increase in value actually gives you a 10% increase um, in your profit. So it, it has a really big impact. Uh, but that can obviously go the other way around, right? Like when prices are going down, that has a bigger impact on your return as well. So exactly. Does anyone have any questions on this one? That was the two deals. Uh, we, we planned to do two deals, and we've kind of covered them already. So um, we wanted to keep kind of the last little segment to answer questions. So if you get, do you guys have any questions? Just go ahead and just post them. We'll we'll kind of mm -hmm. answer them as they come. Not all at once. Don't be shy. <laughs> no questions at all? Not a single question? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of a question. <laughs> Do you have any, any anything you want to add, Anthony? No, I think that makes sense. Uh, obviously, if you guys have questions or if you have properties, oh, you have a question. Oh, there you go. What submarkets, what submarkets within Calgary have interested you? Interest have you interested at the moment? Okay. You want to take that one? Sure. Um, there's a few areas of Calgary that tend to make more sense for rental properties. Uh, usually, they're the B to C neighborhood. Uh, there's a lot of good deals usually that cash flow well in places like Huntington Hills, Bowness, uh, Thorncliffe, Bennington. Yeah, and and something that's actually new lately is the suburbs. The suburbs used to not cash flow very well two three years ago, but now as we saw with that Bridalwood uh, analysis, they, they actually make sense today. Uh, the rents in those areas went up faster than in the inner city. Yeah. Um, Anything you want to add? Um, yeah, no, I would, I would say kind of the same thing, like those areas that you mentioned. Uh, I'm add Ross Carrick as well. Um, I think it's one of the kind of a little pocket of Calgary that's still kind of undervalued, given all the real estate surrounding that community is uh, quite prime and pretty expensive. Uh, yeah, because if you go any neighbor, any one neighborhood out of Ross Carrick, you're you're jumping in value significantly. So I think it's only a matter of time, maybe maybe the next decade or so, 
that, you know, it's that that neighborhood's going to see a lift for sure in property values. So and also, one thing I want to add is the uh, there's communities outside of Calgary that are also great and sometimes overlooked. Uh, places like Airdrie, Ocotokes, uh, Cochrane, those usually cash flow a little better than Calgary as well. Um, yeah. So although you know, recently, I think they've been uh, they've been pretty challenging as well because Airdrie specifically. Yeah, yeah Airdrie has been appreciating quite rapidly and, and mm -hmm. the rents just haven't quite caught up. Uh, and with Airdrie and their legal suite rules, I think most most houses are still single family. It's tough to make, uh, tough to build legal suites in Airdrie because of their rules. And that's something to keep in mind if you want to look outside of Calgary is make sure you review the secondary suite rules for that city. Uh, sometimes it can vary significantly for what from what Calgary does, right? So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. Okay. So we have we have a few more questions, but here's the next one. Yeah, uh, take this one. What's your opinion on condos and apartments? So I'll, I'll go I'll go with this one. So uh, personally, my opinion with condos and and townhouses is uh, unless you unless you unless you can't afford a semi detached or you just can't qualify for something that's a freehold property. Uh, then buy buy these, but other than that, I would generally try to steer you. Personally, I would steer I steer my clients away from co um, condos and townhouses, um, only because of the condo fees. Um, generally, if I own an investment, I want to be able to manage my investment, and the condo fee component of of this rental kind of asset is something I can't control. Uh, it lies entirely in the in the hands of the condo board, and unless you own a majority share or you're on the condo board. It's tough to it's tough to control how condo fees will fluctuate, uh, and for that reason, I I, I generally try to uh, I'm not a huge fan of condos and townhouses. But that being said, if it's a matter of whether you can get into real estate or not, then I would say absolutely. At least try to go for a townhouse versus a condo. They're easier to resell down the road. Okay. Um, yeah, just don't sit on the sidelines because even if you did get into a townhouse. You could hold on to it for five years. You could always refinance it and use that equity, right? Uh, whereas if you sat on the sidelines waiting to buy a semi-detached for five years, um, you just missed out on that five years of payback. So, so yes, yeah. for that, my answer would be the exact same. Uh, we're both not huge fan of condos as rental investments. However. I would say if you're going with a condo, which can be a good stepping stone to getting into a bigger investment later on, um, I would at least try to find a condo that's break even in your cash flow, so it doesn't drag you down every month. Uh, it doesn't really have to be that positive. If it covers all your bills, at least you're getting uh, principal pay down and whatnot, and that can help you get into the next investment. But yeah, I think it's generally not a huge deal, even if you don't cash flow too much, because at least on the repairs and maintenance side of things, the condo fees tends to cover, you know, all the exterior maintenance, windows, yeah. and all the ticket items. Uh, most of yeah, plus your maintenance amount to account for that, right? Because you'll yeah. pay for condo fees, but your maintenance will be much lower. Exactly. All right, so we got next question here. Uh, this one's from Fayaz. Good to see you. Uh, follow up question: What do you target for in terms of cash on cash or cash on cash plus principal pay down in those markets? You want to go first, Anthony? Sure, yeah. So that is really dependent on your own investment goals. Uh, there's no like single answer for everyone. Uh, yeah. That's something that everyone has uh, as kind of like a, a threshold, right? Uh, and this is also market dependent. Uh, my personal minimum for cash flow three years ago used to be 700 bucks a month. I wasn't buying anything that wasn't at least 700 bucks a month of cash flow. Um, I never really had a cash and cash return. I was going more based on cash flow because that's that was my kind of like my safety threshold. But obviously today that wouldn't be necessarily a realistic minimum because it's it's harder to get those kind of return. Um, and also the interest rates are higher, uh, not necessarily expected to stay that way over a long term. So you have to adjust those requirements. But I would say that that really depends on your own personal goal, right? And that could be benchmarking this compared to other investment. Like let's say right now, 
you've been in the stock market and your average return is let's say six percent a year well maybe that's the metric for you to get you to invest in real estate right like anything over that maybe would make sense for you so uh what would you add to that santos yeah i would kind of say the same thing uh it's a it's a different threshold for everyone right uh, for example like if i had 50 units and i was looking at a single family that cash flowed 100 dollars and it was like a five percent return then maybe it's not as appealing of a deal for to me but for a first time investor buying their first property maybe that's good enough right uh, if it means that they get started in real estate investing so it's a different threshold for everyone uh, but ideally, at least my cash on cash, I shoot for 7% and the principal pay down. I generally don't even look at it. It's just kind of like a bonus. Uh, I just access the equity if and when I need it. Right. So that's kind of how I, I, I operate, but, uh, uh, obviously it's different for everyone. So something else to add to, it depends on the type of investment, because if you're buying a property that has very strong potential for appreciation, uh, let's say like a really nice piece of land. Uh, that you think is going to go up in value a lot, that might be redeveloped in, into something else, then you may be fine going with a lower cash on cash return, right? But if you're buying and it's a small town or, or an area of Calgary you don't believe will appreciate, uh, then usually, obviously, you'd want to have a higher cash on cash return because that will constitute most of your return on investment. So Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah. All right. So next one. We have... There we go. Uh, okay, so follow-up question here. So rent faster is good to look at listings, but how about a reasonable? How about a resource that tells you what they're actually rented for? Coming from Toronto, I, was I want to show you something actually based on that. I'll share my screen again. There's a tool yeah. we overlooked in this. Is that rent faster actually allows you to see past rents? Yeah. The problem with that is sometimes there's not enough data to give accurate um representation and you can't see the actual properties however uh everyone can see my screen right now yeah i, I can see it too. yeah so i'll show you here there's a tool if you log in to rent faster as a landlord with your account which is free so you can just create one they have in the tools here in the landlord tools there's a property pricing tool you can use that to get rental statistics so you can pick uh, a neighborhood, for example, so city of Calgary, we can pick, let's say we want all the basement suites in, let's say, Huntington Hills. Put that in the actual community. Oh, yeah, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> there we go. Uh, then you can pick a few other uh, neighborhoods, right? So you can be like, oh, I want also Thorncliffe because it's right beside. Yeah. So it's that nice. will give you the statistics if you search that. You can also drill down, right? You can be like, I want just a one bedroom, the studios, et cetera. Um, takes a lot to generate. The, the only issue with that is if there's been a lot of rentals in that area, like for example, three, four years ago, the market was slower on the rental market. It was easier to get lots of listings. Right now it's a little faster. So sometimes it, it's not necessarily accurate. Um, so we can see here, it shows us a price distribution over time. Uh, so number of listing and then the, a price distribution. Um, so we can see the average price there, right? Yeah. Uh, I think you just put a broad criteria. Yeah. Price over the last year. Yeah. Uh, you can even go up to five years. So it's, it's good for general statistics, but again, the problem is you can't see what those properties are. You can't see what the finishes are. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, it's more useful to see where the market is going and the trends than really, uh, in my opinion, you know, uh, getting good comps for current, uh, for rentals. But you can use that to verify your numbers, right? Yeah. Uh, if something rents for 1500 and then you go in there and it says it's 1000 then maybe you should review um, your analysis, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to quickly add on to that. So uh, what Anthony showed is a, is a very good starting point. Um, but what I also like to do is, you know, you get kind of have a ballpark sense of what it's going to rent for. Maybe if you think it'll probably rent for 16, but you want to kind of push the ceiling and see if you can get higher, um, start pricing it at maybe 17, right? Or 1750 and then gauge the amount of responses you get. So you let it, let it sit overnight and wake up in the morning and see how many replies you have. 
if you if nobody replied back, that means your price too high. Um, and then so so maybe every couple of days or every three days you drop the price by twenty five dollars, right? And then you and then you'll see the number of responses start to rise, and then you can you can sift through those applications and keep dropping the price until you have an ideal number of applications coming in for you to select, like for you to have a good pick out of the pool, if that makes sense. Um, so and don't get that overexcited, guys, too, right? Like if you've got five people reaching out to you, it doesn't mean that all these five people are good tenants. Exactly. Uh, would qualify. So usually you need a, a fair amount to kind of drill down and, yeah, and make sure they meet you for About 10 to 15 people. Generally, that I like to look at, uh, you know, call application, or call landlords or references, um, and then I narrow it down to maybe one to two applicants, run a credit check, and then go from there. So that's kind of how I operate. Um, so, so until then, I kind of drop the price until I find that sweet spot, right? So that sweet spot's what market rent should be at. And obviously, you don't want to start like way off, right? Like if you think it's going to rent for fifteen hundred, don't start at twenty five hundred. Like you just yeah. Gonna piss up everyone. It's not gonna go well. But you yeah. can start at 17 and do exactly like what Santos said and, and go down. And you might rent someone uh, to someone at 17, right? Because maybe yeah. the actual market rent was 17 in the first place. So, yeah. Yeah. Any any other questions? Okay. Well, I think we'll give you. Very, very five Okay, I guess if we, we don't have any other questions, um, yeah, we're going to be repeating this next Tuesday, same time, same place. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much for, for joining in on this first deal review. Like, this this was really exciting. I'm excited to do to, to do next week's session. Um, same, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys uh, all next week. Yeah, see you next week. And, uh okay. Send us feedback, reach out to us if you have questions after the call too. We'll be happy to help you out. Yeah, you can DM any of us, uh, either me or Anthony, or, or reach out to us on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, we're kind of all over. So, <laughs> all right. Goodbye. Okay. Have a good night, everyone.